Hi, and welcome to the Advanced Intellect YouTube community channel. This is the fourth in our series. And uh, as you know already, the purpose of this uh, community channel is really to help you understand our business, more importantly, connect you with the relationships we have and give you some deep insight into the areas of data analytics, cybersecurity, and of course, data privacy. But we're gonna turn the tables a little bit around today and uh, I'm gonna introduce one of my colleagues our senior development, our business development manager, Hilbert Long. Um, he's prepared a couple of questions for me today, really to help you understand what we're doing in the area of cybersecurity. We've touched base on data analytics, we've touched base on, on our privacy department, uh, and we thought it only right that you understand a little bit more about our cybersecurity business. So again, let's kick off. I'm gonna hand you straight over to Hilbert and let's, uh, let's see how we do from a, a cybersecurity perspective. Thanks, Jason. Uh, welcome everyone. So uh, Jay, let's uh, jump straight into this. How did the cyber division uh, come about and what were you and your business partners thinking of? Yeah, Hilly, well, again, I think um, a couple of, couple of people always said to us, you know, what were you guys thinking? Um, especially in 2018, um, you know, we, we know what the, the market is like. Um, yeah. But I think, you know, the people that effectively looked at starting this business, um, you know, we realized that having worked for vendors, having worked for resellers, um, we felt that there were a couple of things that we believed that the customers weren't getting. And, you know, we, we looked at our business and we said, you know, if we were going to start something new, you know, what are the key areas that we'd want to focus on? Um, cybersecurity is obviously where we gravitated towards because, you know, the five of us all had deep experience in, in cybersecurity. So we yeah. looked at our strategy. Um, as you know, we looked at, you know, what it is that customers were asking in our engagements, not only in our vendors, but also from our, um, you know, from, from our reseller community. And, and, you know, we, we came up with what we believed it to be a very, very key strategy. And uh, yeah, we, we're 36 months in. What yeah. was, yeah, I mean, you, you know the journey, right? I think what was very important for us is not to really focus too much on highly differentiating ourselves. And when I, when I say that, I mean that out of all due respect, is it's all about making sure that we deliver against the customer's requirements. We see how customers were struggling out there. We had some of the best technology um, you know, available to anybody in this industry, and, and we were selling tons of it. The challenge that we had was making sure that customers utilized it to the best of their ability. So if you look at the business that we have today, um, technology focused, service focused, you know, focusing on customers deliver against the how, um, you know, that's, that's really what we do as a business. You know, we're focusing on the outcomes. We're making sure that our customers get the value of our engagements. But, you know, more importantly is that, you know, value is not free. Value is all about uh, making sure that we deliver against the outcomes that our customers are expecting. And I believe that's where we are today, three years down the lane. Um, you know, trusted customers, uh, great relationships as we've established over the last 25 years. Uh, but I believe we're in a, in a very great place um, wow. with regards to our investors. Um, and again, you know, we, we will always thank our investors for having the same vision. You know, we now have, uh, we've coined a little phrase inside of the business, which we call the power of three, right? So we've got data analytics, uh, we've got cybersecurity, and we've got data privacy. If we look at the areas that our customers are focusing around their digital transformation journeys, those are three critical areas that we bring, bring to the table, right? Okay. So, so maybe just uh, take us a little bit through you know those areas of focus and why why is it important for for us and why do you believe it's important for customers well i think i think if we if we look at what's happened you know recently and and how digital transformation journeys have been turned on their head i think it, it really helped us understand that our business is relevant now yeah so you know you know, 24 months ago, we were looking at our business and, and our strategies changed a couple of times, right? And I think mm -hmm. most, most agile businesses, you know, move with the times. The nice thing is, is we didn't realize it then. We were building a business ready for COVID-19, right? Yeah. Um, 
you know, working from home, uh, being compliant, being safe, making sure that the user community that, that we service uh, effectively have the assurance that they're safe. Um, you know, we were building that and we didn't even realize it. What, what we did also realize very early on is that focus is critical. So hence, we've now got the three divisions. We split nice and early um, with yeah. our data analytics division, focusing on our Splunk implementations and making sure that we can help customers leverage off, you know, that data. But from a cybersecurity perspective, we also, I mean, you know, you and I were reviewing some of the vendors we went through. You know, we've, we've in the last three years, we've looked at 32 vendors. And, yeah. and primarily, not only just on how we can help our customers achieve some of the, the, the critical strategies they're facing, but also customers that understand our markets. You know, Africa is not an easy market. South Africa is not a highly mature market as well. You know, 90% of the customers we service are still getting to grips with security awareness. So, okay. you know, we had to build a business that took the customer through that process and helped them understand and help their management understand what it is that, you know, we can do for the business. And I think if you yeah. look at the, 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 the three areas of business we have now, um, which obviously includes the privacy department, the cyber and the data analytics. You know, these focus areas help us help customers against some of the critical challenges. We, we've yeah. heard it since COVID-19, and, and this is now almost nine months in, is that everything is about simplification. It's about, mm -hmm. um, you know, consolidation. It's about reducing costs, but it is still about remaining compliant and remaining safe. So if you look at the strategy that we've looked at, and you know we've embedded artificial intelligence into every conversation we have because augmenting our customers' teams are our number one strategy is, you know, this, this global shortage of cybersecurity uh, resources. Um, you know, it's, it's an interesting concept. Um, yeah. you know, we challenge it from an African perspective because we don't believe that there's sufficient jobs for everybody who's in the cybersecurity but. But if you look at it in its contextualization is, you know, being able to walk into an engagement and help a customer understand that we're not here to outsource, we're not here to, you know, you know, circumnavigate your strategies. We're actually here to help you build a sustainable cybersecurity and compliance strategy that ultimately we can hand over to the customer. Um, yeah. You know, and, and I think that is that is critical, right? It's it's about okay. empowering our customers to prevent, uh, you know, them from being uh, being attacked and and the adversaries winning. Okay. Now, now, why do you believe that this sets us uh, apart? You know, this area of focus is is quite congested, and what what I mean by the area of um, of focus is there's a lot of vendors, there's a lot of service providers out there. And um, you know they're all promising the cyber resilience if you buy them. Why? Why do you think we are set apart from from them? Well, I, 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 let's 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 just touch on a couple of points. People, process, uh, technology, right? Um, yeah. If you if we if we look at an organization, and we look at how many technologies exist, especially in our enterprise customers, those customers that unfortunately have been in the news over the last six months, they've got great yeah. technologies, right? They've been sold, we've sold um, the best technologies available to them, but it's yeah. how they use them. It's how the organization's maturity can adopt those technologies. So, you know, why, why we believe we're relevant at this point in time in the conversation is, we still know that there is a big place for technology providers and servicing the technology. It's apt without a shadow of a doubt. But if we look at the pressures today, Hilly, I think um, you went to uh, the RSA conference uh, two years yeah. ago. I went uh, well, three... oh, beginning of this year, just before COVID hit. Wow. Okay. So, so, and, and I was at RSA four years ago, right? And I, and I think, you know, what we got to see is you even highlighted there's 4,000 vendors there. Yeah. The, the reality is, is, I think customers understand, you know, by the time we walk in the door, customers have already done a level of research, you know, right. by the time we start engaging, uh, customers have already, you know, spoken to, you know, the big four about certain processes and certain people and certain policies. You know, the, yeah. the reason we really believe that we have the capability to help customers is really by looking at certain efficiencies and, and, and then more importantly, focusing on the how. You know, one of the key areas that we've really focused on is ensuring that we help customer get the value out of their investments. 
Yeah. So, you know, and, and again, in, in that specific area, you know, we've, we've been struggling for the last two years in that specific area, but now it's starting to come into its own because why? Because I don't have unlimited sums of budget to throw at new technologies. So if you look at where we are as a business, we're not an advisory business. And I think that that needs to be very clear. We partner quite nicely with some really critical advisors uh, in the area of helping customers with their strategies. You know, what we look at doing is taking that strategy and then making sure that a customer can manage it once that strategy yeah. is, is, is finalized with technology, artificial intelligence, and, and more importantly, making sure that they can defend themselves preventatively and proactively against what we're seeing at the moment. Um, you, you know, you and I have both seen probably in the last, I'd probably say five months, business email compromise is a huge problem. It's, it's, yeah. a, it's a problem that unfortunately most providers of email technologies are not really helping with, right? We're educating the users, but they're still paying invoices that are not from their trusted customers. The only yeah. way for you to look at circumnavigating technologies like that or, or, or mechanisms like that is by looking at uh, potential automation strategies that embed behavior analytics or look yeah. at the way that normal looks like in your business. Um, you know, we've got solutions to customers' business email compromise challenges. We've got solutions to making sure they get the best value out of their technologies. But more importantly, you know, we, we look at the way that the customers in their environment are operating and, and how we can best help them to become cyber resilient, right? And, yeah. you know, again, anybody that you talk to, there's a defense in depth strategy, there is a compliance yeah. strategy. And, and I think where we do find ourselves, which is in a very unique position, is understanding the client's requirements. You know, not everybody's going to buy everything from us. But what we sure know is that we have the very, a very clear view of what's happening in the customer's environment. How do we help them move from, you know, maturity one to maturity five? And again, maturity five is a big push, right? Uh, or how do we help them measure compliance that relates to their business? It's the same as our privacy department. How do we yeah. help? It's fit for purpose, right? And I think okay. Okay. this is, if we look at where customers are today, it's about helping them achieve a cyber resilience that is fit for purpose for their organizations. Yeah. Not somebody next to them, not, not a peer, yeah. not a competitor, but it's about how we can help them in their journey. So, so you've, you've touched on very high level, uh, uh, you know, you know, you've mentioned cyber resilience, you've mentioned compliance. I mean, as part of our or, or your cyber resilience strategy, you also have a compliance as a focus area. Why do you have that as a go to market? Yeah, well, you know, I, and, I, and I think you know this, you know, from, from our strategy perspective, we believe that if customers are managing risk, it helps yeah. them decide how much they should be spending on technology how much they should be spending or re-looking at their processes, and their, area, operator, right? their infrastructure. Absolutely. Um, you know, the challenge involved with risk is it does take a little bit of work. And I think, yeah. you know, and I know that over the last six years, you know, we've been talking to customers around, um, you know, how do you take a risk-based approach? And we've seen many vendors, yeah. you know, talking about this risk-based approach, risk-based approach. And, and we appreciate it because it's what we've been talking about. The reality yeah. is, is, like with compliance is certain compliance regulatory requirements are relevant to certain industries. You know, POP is relevant to everybody, but not all of POP is relevant to everybody. Um, you know, we recently had an engagement uh, where we were working with a, a, a multi-million dollar company, which happened to have only five people in it, but they were working with a blue chip entity and that entity wanted them to have a DPO, wanted them to have uh, all different types of controls in their environment. They, they want, I mean, the, the, the questionnaire that they'd received on this assessment was ludicrous to say the least. Yeah. But, you know, again, this comes back to horses for courses, right? The reality is that organization could prove compliance, but they'd never done it before. In fact, so much so that the CEO was so worried they were going to lose the contract. What was critical for us is to help them understand that that assessment, yes, it had 45 questions and it was intense. Of that 45 questions, there were only 15 questions that were really relevant to their business because we had subject matter experts advising the client. And we quite 
quite, you know, quite succinctly help the customer answer the questions to the satisfaction of their third party. And, and that was great, you know, and these are the kind of things that, you know, we ultimately really pride ourselves on doing is working yeah. with the customer, understanding their environment, but then also saying to them, you know, is what you've currently got today, it was good enough. But, you know, how are you making sure that it's good enough today? And then more importantly, how are you moving to the machine threat that's out there. And when I say machine threat, you know, we're seeing, um, you know, ad our adversaries designing ransomware, botnet armies, all yeah. at machine speed, right? Yeah. So, so how do you take, how do you take machine speed, throw a person behind a console and hope to goodness they know how to deal with all those logs? You have to throw some intelligence in there and you have okay. to start look at augmenting these really clever people you've got in your business and, and just making the right investment. We see that today. Everybody is still, it's, we call it the cat and mouse game, right? Yeah. You know, the mouse is always one step ahead um, and the cat's always playing catch up. And these are, these are the things that we're saying is that, you know, at the end of the day, you know, what COVID has shown us is digital transformation is excelling. Customers need to relook at their strategies. You know, our best friend today is the architect because he's re-architecting. Yeah. He's re-looking at the way things have been done. Um, okay. You know, everybody's working from home. The network's no longer behind the firewall or the VPN or the, you know, it's just things have changed. And the nice thing to know is that when we started our strategy, our strategy at the end of the day was to challenge the norm. To yeah. challenge the way that customers are thinking about the, the, the challenge of being hacked. Um, and unfortunately, like I say again, you know, over the last six months, we've seen some really decent brands being put in the spotlight because of certain breaches. And, and I think, and I think again, it comes back down to that question that you asked is if I understand my risk, whether infrastructure, whether external in uh, you know, categories, whether it doesn't matter, if I understand my risk. I can make yeah. the right investments. I can also have a look at the newer technologies that exist today. And I can make yeah. sure that I get the most out of my investment over the, you know, the next three to five years. Because the reality is, is, you know, digital transformation is here to stay. Organizations that are agile and can step up to what our adversaries are looking at. That's, you know, that's, it's great to be in the place that we're in because we understand that with our customers and we walk them through that process. Agreed. Okay, so so let's bring it a little bit more uh, closer to home, right? So tell us about building your team over the past couple of years. And yeah. it's it's been yeah. a journey, right? It's it's been a it's been a hard journey. So yeah. so tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, and and you know what, the way that we see team, and and, and I think you know just defining team, team is our customers, team is our yeah. vendors, and team. Are the people that we work with internally, right? I think yeah. internally, um, you know, we, you know, what, what was a very critical focus for us is being subject matter experts and understanding, you know, the way that you know the threat landscape was changing, making mm -hmm. sure that you know the team that we have who are highly skilled and highly certified, you know help our customers articulate that because it's quite easy to get into a highly technical conversation. But we also find right now, a lot of our executives need to understand what it is that's happening in their environments and why they need yeah. to simplify. Why do they need to consolidate? Why is this digital transformation thing taking over? But also at the same time, you know, looking at our technical resources, looking at our account management and customer service resources, building that function was important because being an outcomes-based business, you know, it is about how do we measure the result that we're both expecting, the customer and us. And, and, you know, also our vendors, you know, most of the vendors that we partner with today have helped us differentiate ourselves. And, and this has also been on the back of uh, AWS and Microsoft, right? So yeah. if you look at 95% of the vendors today, we deliver those through microservices because we also understand that everybody's tired of having a, you know, a million rand shoved down their throat uh, because yeah. they want to move down this route. But cash flow is a problem, right? I mean, with some of the largest customers, we're having cash flow conversations. Yeah. Um, so interesting, right? So, you know, yeah. having that model, having that partnership as part of our team, and then being able to deliver that um, to our customers, who's an extended version of our team. And by the way, you know, we take a lot of advice from our clients because we're small, we're nimble, we're agile. 
um, if, if, you know, one of the things that we always say is when we do walk into an engagement, you know, the customer has already done research, 60% of the research, right? And now it's our job to help them understand why and how. And I think the critical component for that is the research that we do and the development that we do with our customers and our vendors, you know, helps us remain relevant, but at the same time, reducing costs, reducing complexity, but more importantly, more importantly, staying safe, man. And I think, you know, we're seeing it time and time again. Um, you know, my wife, we had an opportunity to work for a, a security awareness organization for four years. And, you know, we represent them as well. What, what is critical is how many people at the, the executive layer just don't understand the fundamentals. So, yeah. you know, and, and that's, you know, that's why formulating this team, you know, looking at the four pillars of what our team is, um, has been critical because every aspect of managing our accounts, technically enabling the account, but at the same time, understanding the journey of the customer, you know, so we've built, we've built a team of customers and we've built a team of really competent subject matter experts. And that helps us remain, you know, relevantly, uh, you know, relevant to our, to our clients, which is, yeah. which and, has and been a, a client, pleasure. Right? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, I mean, Jay, thank you very much. Um, I really believe that, uh, what we've shown and, and what we've spoken about today um, should give the audience quite a great insight about what we're doing at the moment. Um, I'm sure we're going to look forward for, to the to the next um, installments in the series. I believe it's privacy. So you're going to talk to our, our, our head of privacy yeah. and uh, we're going to uncover the value out of out of that space. Absolutely. So, you know, Hilly, and again, all, I, all I'd say to the community is, is one of the things that we really are going to help, you know, post the company. So yes, we were the last kids on the block. We did privacy a couple of days back. So, you know, look out for that, that YouTube video. Um, you know, hope you've got some insights as to what our strategy is. We haven't gone yeah. too much into which our vendors are and things like that. That's freely available on advanced.tech. Um, but I think what we do want to make sure that this community leverages is the thinking, the methodologies, not only of okay. ourselves and our subject matter experts, uh, you know, in the areas of data analytics, cybersecurity and privacy, but also that of our customers, because, you know, we're not, a, we're not on this journey by ourselves, right? You know, we're on this trip with our clients um, to help them defend their organizations against, uh, you know, internal and external threats. And I think the, uh, the community is going to light up over the next couple of months, especially with, with some of the people that we've got joining us. So I'm looking forward to that. Yeah, you and me both. Absolutely. Uh, I, I, I've heard there's some big names coming on to, onto the series. <laughs> well, we so say, we, we say big out. names, you know, we say big names, but I think what we're going to do is we're going to take the expertise. Um, I think one of the things that we want to make sure that this platform doesn't do is, you know, you will automatically be able to find out who these resources are. A lot of people are not going to know who these resources are, right? Um, yep. But these are the guys that effectively are, are, are weaving the magic in the back end of some of the largest organizations we work with today. Um, and that being either revenue for focused or whether it be infrastructure focused, but we're going to make sure that we share some really good information. So, you know, all I say is, you know, click the subscribe button. We'll make sure that you get updated with the content as and when we're publishing it. But Hilly, thank you again. I appreciate you interviewing me. Turning the tables has been quite a tough no <laughs> getting to this point. Um, but again, please guys subscribe. We look forward. Um, we're going to have our customer first customer interview really shortly and uh, look forward to seeing you on the next session.